record and you all right good deal so we're going to be reading chapter three today the industrial revolution remember as we're going over the chapter pay attention this is what you're going to uh with your small poster and your big post you're going to be about we are focusing on in what way did the inventions of the industrial revolution impact people's lives and so you've already got to choose your and so now we're probably going to get to the chapters where it talks deeply as to what your invention was about you have a question? All right, thank you. So I'll read the first page and then we'll be going to read. Moving toward the industrial age. Newman for farming, if an English family lives, if an English family living in, say, the 1300s to travel forward in time to the 1700s, they would notice that many things are still the same. But some important changes were happening. Before the Industrial Revolution, people still worked on the land, struggling to put enough food on their table and keep from starving. Over the years, however, inventive people discovered new and more efficient ways to do their work. And foods not known before were brought across the Atlantic from the Americas. Potatoes grew in well, well and moist, sandy English soil. Crumb, corn grew well too, but most farmers thought it was only fit for farm animals. Most families probably never even tasted chocolate. Many never saw anyone smoking tobacco. These were expensive items and were only sampled by the wealthy. Oxen, cows, horses, sheep, goats, and pigs were larger now, thanks to better feed and breeding practices. For many families, there was meat on the table more than just once or twice a year. Better fed people were healthier and even noticeably taller than their ancestors. More sheep also meant more wool for clothing and blankets. More important, the availability of new crops were the many, were the many new tools and farming techniques. New plows were stronger and heavier and had metal blades. These plows allowed the plowmen to loosen and turn over deep, richer soil. Seedlings had better root systems and were less likely to dry out if there was a little rain. New methods of harnessing draft animals made better use of their strength. Larger oxen and horses hold these heavier plows more efficiently. Agriculture was beginning to bring profits to the lords and some of the most enterprising villages. Improved roads and newly dug canals made it easier for farmers to bring grain to the mill. Flour was more easily brought to market to nearby towns too. Water wheels were improved so milk could grind more flour. There was an enthusiasm for change, especially if it meant increased productivity and increased profits. So think about it. Way back when, they didn't know about all the fertilizers and all the chemicals that you could put in plants to make them bigger. They didn't know that if you gave animals certain foods, that it would make them bigger and stronger so they would be able to do more work. So as more and more people started to invent these things, it would help them. It would help them grow more crops. It would help them get their animals bigger so they have more food for themselves. So all these inventive people back then just kept developing ways to make more, increase productivity, making more things. And since they can make more things, now they can start selling more things, making a little bit more money. So the more things they can save, or the more things they can make, the more things that they can sell, and the more things they can do for themselves and for their community. All right. And who is my first one? Got it? Or Louis? Louis, what you say? The English landscape began to change. Land where villagers had once grown crops was taken over by gen gentry. Gentry, landlords, and enclosed fenced in and turned into a pasture. For the sheep, whose wool was in great demand for cloth. Meadows and woods that lords and villagers had shared were also enclosed. Previously, the land was divided into many small plots. By the 1600s, larger, more efficient farms were emerging. As this enclosed movement lumped together many small fields, the cost of producing crops fell. Fell. Fewer farm workers were needed. With bigger harvests and lower costs, the, the large landlords repeated more profits and grew wealthier. But many villagers found themselves without work. Some hired themselves 
out as day lab laborers. Many rural families scrapped together and modest living by doing weave weaving, weaving in their cottages, desperate for work. Hundreds of thousands of villagers had to leave countryside, flocking little cities, wow. to flocking to cities, to nearby mines or to the American colonies. Eventually, these displaced people and certainly their dis dis displaced. displaced would become a large part of the labor force as the industrial age took hold. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, things are starting to change. Things are starting to change with that. My next reader. And before you go, we're gonna go ahead and pause so we can finish the chapter, then we'll get going with the rest of the lesson. All right, whenever you're ready, last paragraph. Inventions and improvements could not be kept in one country. Yeah. Yeah. Anyone determined and clever enough to try their hand. There was some luck involved and sometimes a great deal of fame and money for the successful inventor. The Industrial Revolution may have begun slowly with improvements in growing crops. It really took off, however, when glowing, glowing coal melted iron ore or converted water to soup with the production of iron. There was rail railroads and ships, bridges and barges, looms and machines of all kinds, planking and weird doing the work that once had been done by people and animals. It was a new age, the industrial age. Modern times had begun. Awesome. Thanks, Sophie. So yeah, all of these events. Yeah, on this photo. What is the train's tire looks like a regular car track. It, it almost looks like a regular car track. That's what it's talking about. They're made of iron. So there are tire tracks, and they can make the, the wheels out of iron so they can lock onto the track. And then they have a steam engine in the front, and they can start like all the stuff that they make. They can now take across country on the train tracks. So that steam engine, they don't have to rely on maybe a horse and a wagon or something like that. All right. But yes, yeah, so all these new inventions, they made so many things better and um, and it allowed them to make more things and make money. And those people who said some of those inventors who were lucky, well, a lot of them got very rich and they made a, a very important item for them. All right, so everybody knows who that group they're in, right? Okay, so. For your poster today, you're going to grab a small piece of paper. I don't care if you make the poster sideways or long ways like this. Okay, you're just going to need a few things for your um, for your mini poster. And so, the first thing I want your title really big somewhere. So, say, let's see, what is one of your items? Factories. Factories. Okay, so let's just for an example. Factory, somewhere big on your paper. Okay, so a big title letting me know what it was. Then you're going to have a one page journal. Not everybody's going to have to do it, just one per group. Just one page per group that you're going to put on your paper, paper somewhere. Your one page journal talking about the factory. Okay, talking about. Invention. All right, you have your one page journal. Then somewhere I want 10 facts or how it's impactful. Of course, you're probably going to have the same information in your journal, but I just want the facts listed on your paper. Because when we present, I'm not going to have you read off the whole thing. Just each person in your group, I'm going to say, okay, so how were factories impactful in the Industrial Revolution? If I were you in my group, I would read these first two, then you would read the next two, and then whoever else is in the group would read the next two, and we're just going to kind of break it up amongst your group that way. Just so you don't have to sit up here and read the paper. I know, okay, 
factories. Factories made it possible for mass production, and factories gave lots of people more jobs. That would be my two factors. And then you would share your two. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. So we want that. We want title one page, journal 10 facts, and at least three to five images. They can be printed or drawn anywhere. Anywhere on your page, maybe a, a pretty background, whatever you may be. And if you need to, or I'll show you how to create a Google Doc just so you guys can share the document and post whatever you need to. Once you share that with me, I can print it off down to Office and you can go get it. All right. Is there any question about how we're doing this little mini post? Tomorrow I'll bring in the post board and we'll make them big. Yeah. Like for the one page paragraph, does it have to be like in exactly one page? Close to, close to. I want you to use your computer to research some information and find out all you can about facts. We also just did that PowerPoint and it's in your book. So we got to see a little bit about what factories do and how it gave people jobs and then they had the worker process and stuff like that. So you're going to have to do a little bit of research and digging in your book on the internet. But I just want you to find the information and try and write a one page chart on the information you found. Not word for word, but I don't want you to copy and paste. But I want you to write a one page chart on how it's impacted. Does that make sense? Yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. Go ahead and get a piece of paper, get together on the group. Let's go. Yeah, for right now. Yeah, yeah first, first, all we need is there. There's something to be like a miniature poster. And then tomorrow, when a big, big poster board, once the small one's done, a clear take one together and it'll be part of the great. All right, All right, so now the kids are going to get to working, and that's my lesson.